Hello everyone. This is the second page of the Chapter 5 Test Review for Algebra 1A. Um, this is on systems of equations and inequalities. I'm trying to get this thing to focus a little better for you. Um, but it looks like we're kicking off number 9 here with just another system um, that needs to be solved. And with these ones, you get to choose between substitution and elimination. Um, this one, I think, really could go either way. I think you could do this one pretty easily with substitution by adding the 6y to the other side and getting x by itself. Um, or elimination is not so bad because you can multiply by negative 3 and get that to cancel with the 3. So I'm going to try to go with the way that I'm expecting most of you are going to take, and that would be elimination. So I'm going to take this top equation and multiply by negative 3. All right, And I'm going to distribute that and rewrite the equation down below. So that's going to give me a negative 3x um, plus 18y equals, oh boy, negative 3 times 69. I think it's going to be negative 207, but let's just double check. Yep, negative 207. And now I'm adding these two equations together with the goal of canceling out either the x's or the y's. So You'll notice that in this case, the x's cancel. Negative 4 plus 18 gives me 14y. And then negative 45 plus negative 207 gives me negative 252. And then I'm going to come along and divide there by the 14. Let's see. And I end up with negative 18. So y equals negative 18. And then I've got to go back and um, figure out what the x value would be. And so I'm going to plug this thing in probably to that very top equation. That looks like the easiest one to go with for me. So I'm going to say x, whoops, not plus, minus x minus 6y. So I'm plugging in a negative 18 there. Um, equals 69. So this is like a negative 6 times a negative 18, which is, I think, 104. Again, let's try. 108. I apologize. 108. So x plus 108 equals 69. And then if I subtract that 108 from each side, let's see, 69 minus 108. These are big numbers for my mental math capabilities here. I end up with x equals negative 39. So as a final answer here, when I go to write this as a coordinate, I'm going to say negative 18. Nope, I'm going to say negative 39, because that's x, comma, negative 18. OK, final answer there for number 9. So now looking at number 10, number 10 I might choose differently. Um, there is a way I could do this with elimination, but do you notice how this y is over on the right side of the equal sign? I would need to fix that before I did elimination here. So I'm going to choose to do this one with substitution. Like I said, if you chose differently, that's okay. I would probably start by taking this equation on top and dividing everything by 4. And then this would become, let's see, x equals 6 over 4 is going to give me 1.5y minus 1, because 4 over 4 gives me 1. And then I want to take that 1.5y minus 1 and put it in place of x right down here. So when I rewrite that bottom equation, I end up with 8. And then instead of x, I'm doing 1.5y minus 1 plus 2y equals 48. And the reason I like this is my whole equation now is involving y, right? I don't have any x's left to deal with. So 8 times 1.5 is 12, and 8 times negative 1 is negative 8 plus 2y equals 48. Um, let's put the 12y and the 2y together, so I end up with 14y minus 8 equals 48. Um, I'm going to add that 8 to the other side, and so I end up with 14y equals 56. And then when I divide by 14, I end up with y equals 4. Okay. So I've got my y value now. Now I'm going to take that y value and plug it back into my equation up here to find x. So I'm going to go x equals 1.5 times 4 minus 1 
let's see, 1.5 times 4 is 6, and 6 minus 1 is 5. And so then for my final coordinate here, I'm going to say 5, comma, 4. Okay, let's keep going. Number 11, um, they're giving me a picture here and asking me to write an inequality. Okay, and I always start these ones with this in mind, that this is what my, my product is going to look like, right? Y equals mx plus b. This is what I want my answer to come out to be, okay? Um, and I usually start from the b. Don't know why. Um, I think it's because it's the easiest to find. So the b value here is right here at 1. I do want to double check and make sure this is counting by 1s, but because this is labeled as 5, that would be 1. So we know this value is a 1. To get the slope, I want to pick this point and another point on the graph that's kind of obvious. Um, and I, I see the x-intercept here, although you wouldn't have to use the x-intercept. Um, and I notice that to get from this point to this point, I'm going to go down 1. You always want to start with up and down. Okay, do up and down first because it's rise over run. And then you go to the right 2. That's positive 2. And so that means my slope is negative 1 over 2. So I'm going to say negative 1 over 2 times x plus 1. Um, as far as my equal sign goes, I don't want to just leave it as an equals. It's shaded up above, so that's going to be greater than. Because of the dotted line, I would not want to include the equal bar. If this was a solid line, I would have an equal to underneath that. But... As it stands, this is just my final answer. Y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 1. And if you were to go graph that on your calculator or something, you would see that that's the correct answer, or that it matches this picture. I'm just spacing this out a little more. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at number 12. Um, these are really good questions, really good conceptual questions. Um, what value of k would result in infinitely many solutions? So... In order to get infinitely many, especially when we're looking at an elimination problem, and the way this is lined up, I'm thinking elimination, um, we want our result to end up like this. We want 0 equals 0, okay? Meaning I want x and y and my numbers on the other side to all cancel out, okay? So the first thing I need to do, there, I don't know what this k value is, right? So I can't worry about how I'm going to get these to cancel out. I can change my k value to make it work out any way I want. But I want to think about how could I get y's to cancel, all right, because I do have numbers for both of those. And looking at that top equation, if I were to multiply that by 2, I would get a negative 8 to cancel with the positive 8. So I'm going to multiply by 2 on the top. Now look at what that top equation is going to look like now. That first value is 2k times x minus 8y equals 20. And so you'll notice that what I have set up now, my 20s are going to cancel, my 8Ys are going to cancel. I need this to cancel with 6, okay? And so really what I found out here is that what I would like to go in this spot right here is a negative 6. And so then the question is just how do I get that to equal negative 6? Well, really what we're saying is 2 times K must be negative 6, so K must be negative 3. If this had been a negative 3 to begin with, when I multiplied by 2, I would have gotten my negative 6 to cancel with that x. Okay? Um, in the system below, what value of k would result in an inconsistent system? So inconsistent means no solution as opposed to infinitely many. Really, though, the mechanics of this question are, are really similar to the one we just did. Because what we want to have happen now is we want to get 0 equals something other than 0. We want 0 equals some number. Okay, that's what, how we're going to get this to be inconsistent. But my plan is going to be exactly the same. Is I'm going to go ahead and manipulate whatever equation I can, get everything else set to cancel out that's supposed to, and then decide what I want to go in place of k. Okay? So when I look at this equation, I look at that top one and I say, I would like this to be a, a positive 4 to cancel with that negative 4. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2. Okay, And when I do that, I end up with 4x minus 6y equals 36. Okay. 
this cancels. Notice that this does not cancel this time. We end up with, what is this, 58 or something? It doesn't really even matter what this number is. Um, but that's okay. Our goal is to get these y's to cancel so that I end up with 0 equals 58. Okay. So the question now is what needs to go right here? What number needs to go in, in that spot of k to cancel with a negative 6? This one's even more obvious than this one was. We need that k value to be a positive 6. Okay, and I didn't even have to do anything with like a 2k or anything like that because this was just k sitting by itself ready to cancel out with that negative 6y. Okay, and then we get the result that we wanted. Up here I probably should have made a note that this works out to be 0 equals 0. Right, this whole thing, all of this cancels if I make this a negative 6. So that's the difference between infinitely many and inconsistent. Okay, let's carry on here with number 14. Um, number 14 has given us a system, and they're asking us to find the solution by graphing. And I do want to point out that the goal here is to graph the system and use the graph to find the solution. Sometimes I find that people want to use like substitution or elimination to find the answer. And that is a valid way to find an answer, um, but given the fact that this question is specifically saying we have to graph it, um, we're going to have to draw the graph either way. So we may as well use the graph to answer the question. So I'm going to start with that first one. That first one's in slope-intercept form, y equals 2x minus 4. So I'm going down to negative 4. And then my slope is 2 over 1, so up 2 and over 1, up 2 and over 1. Do that a couple of times. Um, draw yourself a nice straight line. Okay. Um, that second equation, first of all, I should point out on your copy, you may have a different number here. Um, I, I put a note up on the board about this, that, that this should be changed to a negative 9 in this problem. So if you haven't changed it to a negative 9 yet, go ahead and do so. If you did it with the original number, um, I mean, you can still do the problem, but you find that, the, that it crosses like somewhere in between the grid lines and you can't really tell exactly where it's at. Okay, You would have to estimate it with a decimal. So Making this change will make it so that you can see the solution a little more clearly. So um, some of you may still like to take equations like this and put them in slope-intercept form, and that's fine. I typically do these by finding the intercepts, meaning if I'm looking for the x-intercept, I cover up the y value here. So I end up with 3x equals negative 9, meaning that I have an x-intercept at negative 3. So I'm going to put a dot back here at negative 3. Now the y-intercept on this one's a little bit strange. It's not terrible, you know, we can make do with it, but when I cover up the x, I get 6y equals negative 9, and that means that when I solve for y, I get negative 9 over 6, which reduces to negative 1.5. And so that just means I have to go down here to like halfway between negative 1 and negative 2 and put a dot, okay? But with those two dots, now I can, I can place my line And what I'm really looking for here is this point where the two lines cross. It's this point right here, okay? And the coordinate there is 1, negative 2 as a solution, okay? Um, and so again, could you have done that with substitution? Sure. Um, or maybe even elimination. You'd have to move things around a little bit to get that to work. But it, you could have, and you would have gotten that same solution. But the purpose of this question was to get you to graph them. Okay, so 15 is another graphing one, but I want you to look at the difference between this problem and this problem. This problem was all equal signs, right? Everything was just equal to, and that means I'm just dealing with lines, or potentially it could have been a parabola or something like that, but it's just lines, no shading, no overlap of any kind. These ones have inequalities in them, and that means that these are going to be lines, but also have shading involved. And then what I'm really looking for is the set of numbers that get shaded by both inequalities. So when I go to graph that first one, and let's see, I'm going to try to slide this up a little bit. Um, when I go to graph that first one, let's see, I want a lighter color here. Um, I'm going to start down at negative 1, okay, because my y-intercept is negative 1. Go up 1 over 2 for the slope. Sorry, catching up with my words here. So starting at negative 1, up 1 over 2 up 1 over 2. Um, and with these, it's not quite as important that your line is in such a perfectly placed position as it is with 
like number 14. Um, I am going to draw a, a solid line because there's an equal bar there. And then shading wise, this is a greater than symbol. So I want to shade everything up above this line. This entire area gets shaded by that first inequality. Okay. My second line there is y is less than 2. That's going to be just a horizontal line at y equals 2. So that's right here. Okay, so it's going to be a line that runs this way. Um, it, there's no equal bar this time, so I'm going to use a dotted line. There we go. And we're shading everything less than, so that's everything below this line. So it's going to be all of this. And so you should notice, it might be a little hard to see in the picture here, but we, we have this kind of triangle shaped area that got shaded in both inequalities. Okay. And so that is really our solution set. That's what we want to darken in as our solution here. This is the area that we're pulling our solutions from. So now I'm giving you a bunch of points, referring back to this graph and asking you, is this part of the solution set or not? Um, and so we want to remember that really what we're looking for is, is points that are in that kind of purpley shaded area there. Um, also, if they are on the solid line down here, that's okay, but they can't be on the dotted line because the whole purpose of using a dotted line is to say that's not actually part of our solution set. So um, when I look at negative four, negative one, all right, negative 4, negative 1. Oh, make sure I count that right. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. That point is right here. Okay. Um, very clearly in the purple area. So I would say yes, this is a solution. There we go. There we go. Um, 9, comma 3. So 9 is going to be out here, I believe. 9, comma 1, 2, 3 is right here. Okay. And that is very clearly not in the solution set. And it, it actually falls in the area that's not shaded by anything. But even if it was up here or down here, I would still have to say no. Okay. So now let's look at 6, comma 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 1, 2. All right, and this is a, a good one to ask about. This is the place where those two lines, the blue line and the pink line, intersect. And I realized, like, when we looked at number 14, that that's what we were looking for as a solution. Um, but remember that that pink line itself is not part of the solution set. I know that because it's a dotted line, because this is a less than and not a less than or equal to. Okay, so because this falls on a dotted line up here, I would have to say no. Now, if that were a solid line, if there were an equal to bar underneath that less than, then I would say yes for that point. Okay, so that point can kind of go back and forth depending on whether the lines are included or not. But then when I look at 0, negative 1, that's my y-intercept right here, okay, that is located in this shaded area on a solid line. And if it's on a solid line, then we can say yes. Okay. That's it for this page. Um, I will carry on with another video with um, page three.